What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Datadash and today is December 28th of 2017. Well, folks, today I'm here to talk about something that's been on my mind as of recent as we step into the year of 2018. Over the past year, we've seen massive adoption of cryptocurrencies where a ton of new users have been flushing into the space and joining to be a part of the revolution. But along with that as well, cryptocurrencies have arisen a lot of new issues and demands that need to be met for long-term adoption. This could be things such as finding solutions to scalability or making it so cryptocurrencies are easy to use for the mainstream, so making it easy to use uh, for transactions actions and for a variety of different use cases. However, even though these issues and the dozens that I didn't even mention are very important, there's something that I've been watching ever since back in August and September to become a larger topic in cryptocurrencies, and over the past month, we really started to see the demand rise in for it. And it is no other than the demand for anonymity and privacy in regards to cryptocurrencies. Whether it be simple peer-to-peer -peer transactions or selling different goods and services on decentralized marketplaces or even trading cryptocurrencies on decentralized exchanges, people have gotten extremely excited about the idea of having privacy in regards to doing transactions over blockchain technology or other decentralized applications. So because of this, I've been seeing this trend back since August and September, and it's become extremely apparent this past month with a lot of different cryptocurrencies in the privacy space rallying up to new highs. So today I want to talk about a few different undervalued projects in my mind that I think could do well going into the coming year of 2018 as this topic continues to grow. I not only believe in these projects myself, of course they are just my opinion, so you got to do your own research and dive into the white papers if you get the chance, but along with that as well, understand that this comes from a sense of my heart. I really do believe that privacy is a pillar within financial freedom, and with cryptocurrencies bringing us our financial freedom back, which we haven't had for a very very long time, we are now going to finally have the ability to stay private and have a sense of anonymity. All right. So today I'm going to be talking about three projects that I'm excited for going to 2018. And without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the video. So as you can probably tell right off the bat, we're going to be focusing on BitBay. This is something that I've been talking about really back ever since the summer of 2017, when I really got onto this whole privacy and anonymity trend. So BitBay itself, uh, ironically enough, it has a very similar name to eBay, but BitBay is a a decentralized marketplace where people can sell goods and services on a decentralized manner. There's no need for a central authority and you can uh, have a sense of guaranteeing that you are going to be able to make anonymous uh, exchanges over this marketplace uh, without the uh, supervision or censorship of any kind of government. Now, a lot of people would say, okay, so let me guess, this is Silk Road 2.0 on the blockchain. That's going to be great. Uh, well, no, BitBay exactly isn't that. It is a decentralized exchange and technically it really can't be shut down. But what's nice about it is that there is uh, some censorship mechanisms if people are trying to do things that are illicit or violent on the network. So there are people who monitor that to keep it a safe place to make actual decent commerce between individuals. So... BitBay itself is uh, definitely setting itself up to be a professional way to make exchanges. There's no middleman to take transaction fees and a lot of other benefits that come with it. So because of that, I think that it's very undervalued at this point. It's been operating for the past few years. You can make different listings on BitBay. And as we can see on the price here, it's been gaining some traction compared to Bitcoin over the past few days. And we'll take a look at that and I'll tell you all how I'm going to be approaching BitBay. But as we can see, BitBay has a very nice, clean brand to this. Now, last time we checked on it, this was one of the issues with BitBay, is the fact that they didn't have a good sense of marketing, they didn't have a good website, uh, and the logo and just everything was just unappealing. It looked very unprofessional and sketchy. And now, they've actually built a solid brand around it, something that can interest a lot of people into this whole new decentralized economy. So as we go through here on BitBay, uh, to let you all know where it is right now, I know a lot of people are always curious about both where it is now and where it's going. BitBay itself has been functioning for quite some time, and you can download the Qt wallet and list different items on the exchange and make transaction and commerce with people. It's functioning, it's there. However, one of the issues about BitBay, much like other cryptocurrency projects, is its ease of use. Now, it is quite easy to use, but you have to download a kind of outdated Qt wallet desktop client, which at this point, it's still what you have to use for BitBay and a lot of other decentralized exchanges. However, BitBay is going through and adding a lot of new things in its roadmap. So let's go ahead and take a look at what they've got for 2018. First and foremost, I think the one of the biggest highlights is their mobile app wallet. This is something I'm extremely excited for. Mobile adoption, as I've stated clearly throughout the channel, 
is key for your cryptocurrency or your platform to take off in the long term. You need to have mobile interface and allow people to do, in this case, for example, with BitPay, uh, sell different goods and services over the exchange on mobile devices. So. I think that's extremely important. I don't know if they're going to have a mobile marketplace, but at least have a mobile wallet. Along with that as well, a new client GUI, a new user interface for people on the platform. This has been extremely important because as I said, their wallet isn't, it's not the worst. I've seen worse QT, uh, I've seen uh, QT wallets there uh, worse than what uh, BitBay offers. However, with a new user interface that they have matching with their website design, if that's what they're going for, I'd be extremely excited about it because it's going to look a lot more modern and a lot more appealing for both users on mobile as well as desktop. Along with this as well, they've got a surprise release. No, I can't give any details to what this is because I don't know what it is. It's a surprise, but it looks pretty cool that they have at least a little bit of a surprise release. The implementation of smart contract templates. This will be very good for BitBay in the long term as well as programmable smart contracts in Q2. But there's two other things that really excite me here, which is the API release. So this is going to be good for long-term adoption where people will be, and be able to integrate with the API of BitBay. And along with that as well, a fully functional web wallet marketplace. Now, they technically have a web wallet. In fact, I just set one up here uh, so you can go ahead and send and receive BitBay. It's all functional. But if it looks like this, first and foremost, they're already on the right track. It's minimalistic and simple. But with this, they're going to be having a, um, a web wallet with the marketplace as well. So you won't have to download, from my understanding, the actual desktop client to go about listing and selling different items and goods and services on BitBay. So I'm really excited about that. I think that's important for long-term adoption of BitBay. Uh, and if they can keep it in this type of user interface, both, both on the mobile um, application as well as the desktop client, I'm really, really excited about this. So BitBay is looking good. They've been improving on every area that I thought they needed to improve, mostly ease of use for users as well as branding and marketing. BitBay's got a functioning product. It's just getting people to feel an ease of use of using it so they will adopt it. So now that we've talked about that, what I want to talk about here is the price action because I know many of you are like, well, Nick, this thing has risen up towards 2,000 Satoshis and is still hanging quite high in its Satoshi comparative. So what do you think about it? Um, well, I'll let you all know this first and foremost. I wasn't so caught away by the price action here. I think we all know altcoins have moved up a decent amount. What I was really curious about is the volume change as a reason. Now, we all know altcoin markets have been doing well and because of that volume has increased, but the volume increase on BitBay is out of the ordinary. And I think some of this comes from the fact that SafeX failed back here um, in early November. Uh, there was, or, well, not so much failed, but uh, went through uh, a lot of announcements in regards to delisting and a lot of other concerns uh, with the project. So with SafeX out of the picture, a lot of opportunity comes in for BitBay. And along with that, not to mention, I think they've gone through a lot of marketing and rebranding, so that's brought in a lot more interest into BitBay, and I've loved this change of volume. Again, this is out of the norm. If we take it to the monthly here, we can really see, oh, sorry, I forgot, I, I actually, I, so basically I unplugged my internet because for some reason my, uh, my USB thing keeps popping up. But anyways, the increase in volume has really been encouraging me to look into this, and basically what I'm gonna be looking for in the sense of price action, thankfully we still have the chart here, uh, is basically a hold around these levels and a bring up above the 2,000 Satoshi resistance, and then to find support on 2,000 Satoshis. Now, I don't hold any position in BitBay, but you can get it on Bitrix if you want, and I'm thinking about potentially bringing over a position of Bitcoin to eventually buy some BitBay on the exchange because I still have a Bitrix account. I just don't use it too much. So hopefully maybe you can get on Binance as well. That would be really good. Next up is Verge here. So finally, uh, I know many of you have been probably wanting me to cover Verge as a recent and spend some time talking about it. I've been mentioning it from here to there. I, I covered it in the past few videos. However, Verge itself, has been garnering a lot of attention. There's been so much going for Verge in regards to marketing publicity from people like John McAfee, but along with that as well, the hype around the Wraith protocol, as we'll talk about throughout this. So Verge has been a community-grown, homegrown cryptocurrency that didn't get launched off some fancy, expensive ICO or some pre-mine. Verge has been completely from the get-go built from the community around the ideas of anonymity and privacy. And we've been covering Verge ever since this coin was um, under $100 million in valuation. We covered this quite some time ago. So it's really cool to see it up here at $1.7 billion and just a few days ago being valued at $4 billion. So a lot of you would say, you know, well, Nick, isn't this risen up a lot? You know, you usually don't like to touch coins that are more on the high end. 
but we've experienced a nice pullback here and I'm going to be talking about Verge. Now, I have not built a position in Verge, but I want to talk more about some fundamentals and then we'll get in regards to the trading side. So like I said, it's been a, a community grown project that's focused on security and anonymity is, and is integrated with the Tor browser. So they've got a lot of integrations as well as their Discord integration, which I liked as well, where you can easily use Verge in a variety of different places. But the real standout for Verge is coming in two different things. First off, I like a lot of the features that come with it. Block, uh, block times are around 30 seconds compared to things like Pivx, which is one minute, Monero, which is two minutes, and Bitcoin, which is 10 minutes. So you have quick transactions um quick private transactions and along with that the scalability to take over 100 transactions per second that is well over enough transactions for a private currency i don't think you'll ever need more than 100 even on a global network of transactions for privacy so this is very good for verge uh, in this regard comparative to other privacy coins Along with this as well, they're close to their max supply here. So we can see that the circling supply is close and don't worry about the large supply guys, the market cap is what matters here. Um, so along with this as well, you've got a few different things that really stand out. This is the other component that I wanted to talk about outside of the normal standard features, which is the Wraith protocol, which will allow you to make standard transactions or private transactions. And having the flexibility of both will make Verge a, strength, a strong player compared to other privacy coins. And last but not least, mobile privacy, mobile transactions. If they can make it so you can have virtual transactions on a mobile wallet, I think they already have an Android wallet, might be wrong on that, but I think they're working towards iOS and Android. If they can fully deploy this, have a beautiful user interface for it, and give you the functionality of the Wraith protocol, that's huge. To make standard transactions or private on mobile, that's massive, and that will give Verge a huge first player advantage to that feasibility of making either standard or private transactions on a mobile device. Very big stuff. So again, really optimistic about Verge in the long term, guys. I know I talked negative about it when it was here at 2000 Satoshis, but I mean, to be fair, it was overvalued. It was up 40 times its valuation within a matter of two weeks, going from 50 Satoshis all the way up to 2000. So because of this, now that we've seen some correction, I know a lot of people are saying, Nick, it's gone down more than 50%. Should I get into it? Uh, guys, I can't dictate when you guys get into things or not. I'm not going to sit here and tell you what's the perfect price to buy into things. However, I have not built my Verge position yet. I am waiting for Verge to pull back a little bit more. And if uh, I'm seeing it, I know I have my thing offline, so yeah, it's probably not going to load. But as we uh, can take a look here, if you apply the team indicator, the three moving averages that I use, uh, you'll have the 50-day moving average here, which shows the price coming down and finding support at what looks like it might be around 500 Satoshis. Now, that would be perfect because that would be a 75% pullback from the highs, cutting off over 1,500 Satoshis, and finding healthy support at a 10x from where it was back a few days ago. So if we can get the 50 day curving up here and the price continuing to smooth down, down to about 500 Satoshis, I could see Verge being a awesome buy at those levels. That's again, my opinion though. You've got to assess whether or not you want to buy it at the 10 times comparative to where it was back here in December 12th. I think though, I'm going to be playing this for the long term. It's going to be a long term Verge position and I'm going to hold it out and see how Verge does with the Roth protocol as well as mobile applications. So excited about that. Next up is SpectreCoin. Now, this is something that not too many people have been talking about, and I haven't seen too much coverage on. And I think it's due to the fact that it's on a limited amount of exchanges. But SpectreCoin itself is another privacy-based coin. Uh, it's generally used for private peer-to-peer -peer transactions. SpectreCoin has really started to trend up in price recently. However, is still on a very low valued end, and I think this is one of the more kind of high risk plays that you could look for if you're interested in that. However, SpectraCoin went through an ICO back all the way in 2016, and it's been one of the most successful ICOs since. If we take a look at the return here, you can see SpectraCoin has gone up over 271,000% from its initial uh, raised funds. It raised only 15,427 and is now being valued much higher. So if we come over here to SpectreCoin, it has a relatively low supply, a little bit above 20 million. And along with that as well, it is a proof of stake algorithm coin. So it's using as well as that a lot of different integrated technology. It's integrated with Tor and OBFS4, which is a bridge layer for Tor for people to be able to make transactions for those who have ISPs, for example, maybe in China or Russia that block the Tor browser. So 
it's really interesting stuff. And they use a lot of the same technology that Monero uses with, uh, for example, ring signatures. And uh, as we'll go through the video here, we can see, I think there's one other similarity. We'll come back here. Um, I really recommend, I'll, I'll leave this link down below. They have a nice little simple video explaining some of the major things. Dual key stealth addresses. I don't know why I couldn't think of the term, but DKSA. Um, so they've got a lot of the standard privacy features that things like Monero use. So I think that's good in regards to uh, having some stable proven technologies. Along with that as well, you have a 5% per year uh, return for your stake reward. I think this is important as a proof of stake coin. I think 5% is a fair amount as well. Not too inflationary, especially for an early coin. But along with that as well, I love the interface of their wallet. So what's nice about Spectre, and I'll go here on the full screen so you guys can see it maybe a little bit clearer here, we can see that they have a nice clean wallet user interface for peer-to-peer -peer transactions. Along with that as well, you can see it's Tor connected. And what's nice is that you have an encrypted chat built into the wallet. So I think this is all very important in regards to Spectre. And seeing as this is early on, and this has been around since 2016, I like the fact that they've got all this tech prepared right off the bat, and this has been around since early September. So again, I think a community could really start building around this coin. I really like the looks of it. I like the interface of the wallet, and I'm definitely going to be keeping my eye on it. Now, to let you all know, to be fully transparent with you, because this is one of the more high-risk plays and stuff, uh, I didn't build a large position, but I did build some position in it. As you all know, I have my Cryptopia account, and I rarely make plays on Cryptopia, but as we can see here, Spectre coin trades in Cryptopia. Now, the one thing that I'm looking for here with Spectre coin, as we can see here, it's had a nice run up over the past few weeks, but it's approaching a level that it's approached in the past here two times around 17,000 Satoshis. Now, this usually acts as resistance. However, I feel that if this continues to get adoption and people continue to use Spectre coin for anonymous transactions going into 2018, we could break past this level and even make this previous resistance act as support. So, I'm playing on the breakout side going past this level and going much higher for Spectre coin, and I think that it could possibly get listed on a few other exchanges in the coming future. So I'm keeping my eye on Spectre coin here. I think it looks cool. Along with this as well, uh, they could also continue to expand in the sense of marketing and branding. That's my only criticism here. They just have a very simple website, but it's functionable. You know, it's a working privacy coin, and you can make quick private transactions with it. So I think it's one of the more undervalued ones. It's continued to perform quite well historically, so I'm going to be keeping an eye on Spectre coin as well. So these are my three different privacy coins I'm looking at, two of which are mainly used for peer-to-peer -peer transactions, but along with that, BitBay, which is used for a decentralized, uh, decentralized marketplace where people can make peer-to-peer transactions. -peer, um, buying and selling of different goods and services. But I'd like to hear down in the comments down below what you guys are optimistic about in regards to these different types of projects. Do you have a different privacy or an, an um, anonymous coin that you guys are really interested in? If you do, please leave it down in the comments down below. I'm always eager to learn about different projects in the space. And as we know, there's about a dozen new coins each day. So I try to keep up with them and find the ones that are really bringing a sense of innovation and feasibility to the space. But until then, everyone, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Stay tuned.